well it's 40 today i think it might get up to 43 tomorrow i'm going to take this 55 out because there's one thing that's been uh really under my craw is this this cable right here and it's it's binding up in the clutch right there so i'm going to pull this out in the sun move that cable and i've got a new new knife here and i do i do have some other knives uh, that i can rebuild but uh i got a brand new one that i had up in the ceiling so i'm going to slip this new knife in and then the, the pitman will be uh will be hooked back up the way it's supposed to be i mean i could put a bungee on it but why not just put the knife in it so i'll pull this you want to be smart about how you jack this up i've got a jack stand underneath the tractors and gear so it's not going to go anywhere and then we're going to spin these nuts off those look pretty good actually There's the wheels for and then prime. I each built two sickle mowers for the cub. Right here you see a five footer. And this right here is a four and a half footer. The four and a half footers came out first and then the five footer came out after that. But I just want to take a second and have you see this this grass board. This is an original grass board. Uh, you can still almost read the McCormick on it still almost there the original color that it came in and what's even more interesting is it has this this on the grass board which you never see that i've never seen an original grass board i've got a john deere one but i've never seen a, a cub mower with the original grass board on it and this one here has the original hardware on it which is pretty cool in itself but the hardware is still there because usually people take those grass boards off and they huck them because a lot of people who, who have sickle mowers, they just use it for trimming around the bushes or around a pond or along a ditch and then or along a fence. And this grass board really gets in the way. So they just take them off. But you need the grass board if you're cutting hay because it moves the hay over. And then the next time you come through, you'll you'll have a clean spot where the, the shoe, the end of the shoe goes. Because uh, with sickle mowers, you can't really recut hey once it's down and you try to recut it it just plugs up so anyway interesting the cormac is still on the side of it it's the original color all the original fingers are on it see the ihc all the way down and it's kind of hard to tell with the sun but the original blue right there so getting to the the bearings in here you know according to the book you take the wheel off and then you take this little hubcap off well, easier said than done. If it's been on there for 100,000 years like this one has, it's probably not going to come off too well. So I'm going to put the tire back on. And I was going to change, I was going to change this all out. I was going to put um, brand new tires on it. These hold air. Uh, my cousin's tire machine couldn't, couldn't break the, the tire off the rim anyway. And the other cub over there, about five years ago, I bought... Um, brand new rims for it and they were $75, $80 a piece and now you, they can't get them, the suppliers can't get them and the only place I've seen them is Hamilton Bob's on eBay and they're, uh, I think they're $279 a set and I'm not paying that for these so I'll have to figure it out. So the front one's also pretty easy to get back on, a lot easier than the back ones. It's got grease in it. It's better than I thought it would be. So now that I know I can get in there, I'm gonna pretty much save this for a better day. 
because you have to take, there's a castle nut you gotta take off. There's a whole bunch of stuff to remove. And uh, you get real dirty, which is kind of the point, but there's a hole here, almost like I wanted to put a zerk on it. But, you know, um, a lot of people I've seen put grease fittings on, on the outside of these. But uh, the grease looks good. So I'll just put a little bit on this outside race here. And uh, like I said, I just put a little skim coat on the inside of that. And I'm going to call that a day as far as the bearings go. But yes, you have to take the wheel off. Take the cotter pin out, take the castle nut off. And then you have to get a cold chisel and pry that that first bearing off to, to get in there and then you've got a, a felt washer an oil seal not necessarily in that order but that's what's in there so i'm gonna put the wheel weight on and uh we'll call it a day but i i'm glad i can get in there and it looked a lot better than i thought it was going to look and my fingers are freezing so you gotta make sure when you put this on you get the notch where the uh, valve goes. You know that saying, never do now what you can do later? Or as my wife says, you don't have enough time to do it right the first time, but you get plenty of time to go back and do it right the second time. Probably the quietest running cub I've ever seen. This right here is an original crank handle, by the way. Or a crank nut, whatever you want to call it. It's the, the nut that holds the, the stay rod. Not a rod, but stay rod. And then the way these go is this just tucks right in here. There's a spot, and then you spin this nut right back on. And in theory, you won't lose it. I generally paint these orange. I got some fluorescent paint. So at least if it falls off, I have a shot at finding it. This still has the original blue on it, to be honest with you. Be really careful with these knives. I mean, they don't call them a knife for nothing. These are here, these serrated edges. These are bottom serrated. They have top serrated and they have just the straight ones. But uh, these things are super, super sharp. So be very careful when handling them. Gloves aren't a bad idea. And if you, have never seen these before. I like these end sections right here where it's a double section. It uh, it really prevents the end of that at the grass board from plugging up. So I'm gonna slip this in. Um, I remember buying one of these brand new. The first one I ever bought was in like 1996, I guess, and I paid $60 for it. And they're about four times that now. It's insane. I mean, everybody's having supply issues. These hold downs, they don't look worn out, so the hold downs are fine. They have the high arch ones. If I was gonna redo this whole knife, I would definitely use bolts. Put bolts and you have to get high arch. All these right here have to be high. Just like this one, they actually come with one. This first one, because it has to clear the way that it attaches to the, to the ball end there. He used to, back in the old days, you would buy all these parts separate for the most part. Like one part would wear out and you'd, you'd strip it down and take whatever good parts were still there. And usually this ball, ball joint here on the end would wear out. And you can get new ends here on your pitman also. You can still buy them. The Ford, Ford mowers and the IH mowers use a lot of the same parts as far as the uh, pitman goes. There are a couple things 
on these old tractors that I do not relish changing out. And one of them is this spring that goes up in here to hold the clutch on. The brakes are easy because you can really get to them. The clutch, uh, not so much. So you need a pair of very small or channel, uh, vice grips like this. And you can usually get it off without too much trouble. It's getting it back on. Wherein lies the problem? What's the difference. Which way you install them. The hardest part, of course, is getting it in. Once you, you know, you can hook it. You know, it's easy to hook here. No sweat. But then getting it back up over there, not so much. And you don't want to mess it up. You know, you don't want to spring the new spring. Sprung it. There. All right, so that's over. Like that, and I'll bring it back all the way to get as much as I can. Now I gotta get it all the way back here. So the trick is to hook it. Oh, I got it first time, I can't believe my luck. I've been sitting here telling you how hard it was and I did it like a pro. But don't, don't let me fool you. And I'll send this back through. So if you're gonna do this, take the battery cable off, it's way easier. And then when you run the cable back through, just go in behind everything. In the background, you can barely hear that the noon whistle, they call it. It uh, is a throwback from the old days when we used to have a, a factory in town. And there were actually two of them. There was one uptown and one downtown. And those noon whistles would let the workers know when it was 12 o'clock and it was time for lunch break. And one of them broke and they don't have the parts for it, but the other one still does. So this is my cable and it does not, it does not go that way. Um, it goes underneath. There's a a cable holder right here behind the clutch and this holds one of the cables. This goes to the tail light. It comes from the light switch and goes to the tail light. Well this holder in here is big enough that it holds both. And it's all bent. That cable's all jammed up in there so when I fix this in the um, this winter I'll pull that whole cable out and, and redo it. I've got a new light switch. I got the whole shebang. This tractor I painted with Rust-Oleum IH Red. It's a great durable paint. It doesn't fade. It doesn't turn orange or pink. And it's got a nice gloss to it. And it's not a, a parade paint job by any means, but it uh, definitely looks better than rust. So this little, this little holder right here that I've got in my hands, <coughs> it broke off here. It's actually supposed to be held to this, so I probably should buy a new one. But I'm gonna take this one off. So when I when I take this hood off, I guess I gotta get a new cable holder. I could just take a tie wrap, I guess, and it'd be just as good. I know the holder's there for it, and the other one's actually on top of the uh, the head of the tractor, so that's good. I can use that one. You gotta go in behind your throttle lever. And you kinda wanna make sure you don't get any twists in this cable because it's it's zero gauge or zero watt cable. And it doesn't twist very well. And you kinda wanna route this cable the way that it was coiled on the on the roll. You don't want to get any kinks in it or make it try to roll the way wrong way. I said no ox, but it's dielectric grease. It's the same thing. It pre prevents oxidization on electrical joints. And it also helps seal up moisture to so that in itself prevents oxidization. And we'll just smear a little bit of that on there so we get a good connection. Your, your line end first or your equipment end first and then do your power 
and then you don't have any problems typically. I just wanted to show you this the hitch on this. You see this this right here? I don't know if this is factory or not. It looks factory. It's very it's very well done. But the one on my 140 and the other cub are different. And there should be like a, a regular trailer hitch pin through there, so I gotta take that off for the breaker or the impact gun. Because you can't really use your fast hitch equipment with that on. The way these were designed was uh, there was, wasn't a part here. This front, uh, it doesn't matter which way you flip it, it's going to be in the way, so you have to take it off really to use your fast hitch equipment because this gets in the way. So I may have to get another one, but it's very, it's very well made. So it sounds like I got the transmission sound, the, the vibration gone, uh, taken care of. And it's gone now. I took it out and ran the snot out of it. I changed the transmission oil. And I don't know if that's what solved it, but it was sounding, there was some vibration coming out of the torque tube and now there's nothing. It just sounds... Well, I hear the hydraulics a little bit like you typically would with a farm hall, but I don't hear that vibration. So we'll go wide open up the driveway. make an adjustment on my throttle control though because it doesn't stay so yeah it howls a little bit in first gear still but uh, I'm not sure the problem that they have uh, with these newer tractors and I say newer I mean like once they put the fast hitch on is that they blocked the back bolt on the final drive where you would take it off and so what's happened is you have to take the whole fast hitch off to get to the final drive. Unless somebody knows a better way, I don't think there is. I think I think you have to uh, take the fast hitch off. I put one of these on my 78 and it went lickety split. I was hoping it would come out fairly decent because I don't want to bust off a three quarter bolt. Transmission. That's interesting. Because of this right here, it's bent the fender out and it doesn't fit like it should. It's going to fit, but not perfect. Well, I do appreciate you watching. Hopefully you have a great Thanksgiving and I'll talk to you next time. Take care.